Since I'm a mechanical engineer, it may not surprise you that I was somewhat taken with physics class in high school. I especially enjoyed the unit we did on trebucheting and catapulting, which is what led to this monster. I built it back in 2006, and we shot it for many years until this happened. Yep, it did just throw the arm along with the bowling ball. So fast forward six years of sitting out in the pasture, and this is what the frame of the trebuchet looks like. I never had any intentions of rebuilding it, but a pumpkin chucking contest started up at the fairgrounds two miles down the road, and along with people at my parents' church, we decided to fix it up. This is a floating arm style trebuchet where this track above holds the fulcrum which rides horizontally. The counterweight rides vertically in this track, which is just big enough to get a pipe through. As the pipe slides down, it pulls the arm assembly across, which does the throwing action. And here's a look at the track from above. It's just C-channel. And here's the spot where the track vertically and horizontally meet so that the wheel can roll over, but the pipe can also fit through. This trebuchet has some other features. In the front, there's that plow mold board right there where the winch system pulls the cable and it slides on that. This chain is for the release mechanism. It clips in up there and releases, which fires the trebuchet. The last major piece, here's the throwing arm that fits up there. These are the steel rims that roll across in the track. There's about a half inch gap. Those are about six and a half inch wide channels and this is a six inch wide rim. So there's a little bit of slot for it to roll. Down here, this cradle is perfectly sized to hold a 55 gallon drum that we can fill with water. If we wanted to get more ambitious, I have filled it with stone, which was part of why it broke, I think. This is the end that takes the wooden part of the throwing arm. And so this is about a four and a half inch square opening. So the piece of wood needs to get shaved and slid in there kind of like a telescope. Then on the underside here, this is the firing mechanism. There, this hook takes the chain that's over on the trebuchet. And then when you're ready to fire, you pull this pipe off and it dumps it down and then you fire. Very simple mechanism, it works super well. Getting this trebuchet ready for pumpkin chucking takes more than just fixing that wooden arm. Here is the uprights and I'm showing how these uprights have to come off in order for this whole frame to fit under power lines to go down the road and actually make it to the fairgrounds. So here I am cutting some pieces of angle that I'm going to use to uh, bolt on those uprights instead of apparently they were welded on. And here I am cutting them off. I didn't have a torch, so getting these uprights to bolt back on again became a drilling operation, which turned out to be a ton of work. What I did have done is clamp my piece in place, and I drill holes, bolting them together. Uh, and after I got the bolts secure, I would come back and I would weld it to the upright. And here's what I did to the side brace. I did a similar thing where I have an angle and an angle, and the removable part bolts on to the bracket that's welded on to the frame. And here you can see I have the other side ready to go. Now my other issue is I need to get this X-shaped web out of the front to aid the installation of the throwing arms. So I've cut bits of angle iron and drilled two holes in them. I'm going to weld it right here. That way it'll become part of the X and the whole thing can come on from the front. And after I get them drilled I can cut away the X. Now I simply bolt them back on and weld them to the X to make an assembly. To solve the transportation problem, we found this old wagon dolly that's made out of angle iron and it has a uh, axle in the middle. And we put 4x4s across. To go down the road, I've welded a hitch on the front of it with the ball on the end. And this little hitch came with that trailer. And now the dolly's going to sit somewhere about right here. And the whole thing is going to become a trailer to wheel down the road. We also shined up this rubbing surface and we'll put graphite on there so that it slides much easier. And we did eventually need to make a th new throwing arm. So I drew up a drawing showing a laminated beam instead of a single trunk and we were going to coat this with fiberglass to give it additional strength. I started by milling down the boards in my planer. I decided to go with white oak because of its high strength and resistance to rot. After all, rot is sort of what destroyed it, my old beam. 
I'm also going to help the rot resistance and strength by laminating fiberglass cloth and resin in between each board. Here I'm doing a test with oak that I had laying around where I'm trying the fiberglass lamination. Uh, my main goal here is to find out how much thickness it actually adds to the assembly because I need the final glue up to come out to be exactly 4 and 3 8 inches to fit inside of my steel tube. Now, I've never worked with fiberglass before, but from the research I've done, I found it was best to coat both sides of the wood and then really get a lot of fiberglass on the cloth, like almost dip it in there. So that's what I'm doing here. And rather than destroying clamps by exposing them to fiberglass, I'm just going to drill some holes and put screws in to hold the assembly together. And I'll do this when I build the real arm too. Here's the final product. I was pleased with how well the resin adhered to the wood and that cloth really only added about a 30 second. Here's some pictures of the final assembly during the entire arm. We just left the cloth and resin hanging out the side and trimmed it up later and then put a coat of fiberglass and sanded that down to make it look real nice. Now it did end up being a little thick. We had to shave the end of it here to get it to fit inside the steel tube and it was quite extensive but it worked item that needed addressing was the hook on the end of the arm that releases the sling. I wanted something adjustable so I could play with the release point. Luckily I had access to SolidWorks and a few lunch breaks to lay it out. I started by cutting my pieces and then drilling out the holes where the rods were going to go. In case you didn't know, belt sanders are a great way for shaping the edges of pieces and taking off burrs. Then I used a hacksaw to cut my rods to length and I welded it up. With, I didn't take any videos of the welding process because it's kind of hard on the camera. But here I am smoothing out the weld and taking all the little burrs out. And then I gave everything a coat of paint. Finally it came time to test fire the machine. But I had an issue. My 55 gallon drum didn't fit in the cradle. I guess that means they're not all the same size. So I had to resort back to my old one filled with stone that broke the machine. It weighs about a thousand pounds. Hopefully this new arm is up for the stress. Well, the dolly works great, but we're searching for level ground to set it down on. Come in, look at it. Boy, isn't it handy having a bucket tractor around. Just lift it up and take the dolly out. We just secured it with uh, C-clamps when we were transporting it. So you just had to unscrew the C-clamps, take it out. And here I am hooking up the winch to the cable to the pull-down system. And now on to the test firing. Four, three, two, one, blast off! annoying when you break your trebuchet one week before competition. What happens here is the sling ripped in half, which threw the pumpkin backwards, and when you fire the trebuchet without a projectile, there's too much energy for the carriage moving forward, so it went off the end stops, and when it came back, it came off the track, which bent the axle on the far side. Stay tuned to see if we get it fixed in time.